let's talk a little bit about how we created that jazz guitar version of the classic Autumn Leaves. And basically here, we're doing what's called the um, call and response technique for uh, chord melody playing. A lot of chord melody, you basically try to keep the melody on top of every chord. So every melody note... <laughs> has a chord underneath and that's a little bit tricky sometimes when you have more of a swingy thing with almost like a walking bass feel. So a lot of jazz guitar players in this instance will prefer to sort of go back and forth from a melody phrase and then comping some jazz chords. So this song really works well for that. If you listen to the original versions and even the piano versions, you'll hear the bass is sort of playing a conversation with the lead line. Really, really cool. So for example, when we start out here, that beginning phrase, which is really elegant. And then we go ahead and comp those two chords. So we're doing like a two five circle in between each melody phrase. So we do that first phrase of the song. Then with a C minor seven, up to the F nine. And then the phrase happens sequentially lower. And then we get to that really elegant B flat major seven. And the E flat major seven. Once again, if you're wondering why I'm not showing you more exact details on the fingerboard in this video, that's because this is sort of a primer and you definitely want to go get the actual lesson where you have the note for note tablature, the standard notation, and the audio file playable in various speeds. And that's really how you want to be learning this. Um, you can refer back to this video later on after you get the lesson to, for the overview, but generally to learn those exact chord shapes, get the tablature and notation with the lesson. It has all the grids on top every single chord shape blocked out, okay? So make sure you pick that up. In the comments below, there's the link, or go to jamalong.org and um, search around in the guitar category. So basically, after that second session, we do that really cool B flat major seven, okay, to the E flat major seven, and then that third phrase, that really cool third phrase, which goes uh, basically from here, and then we have this really cool A7 flat five, okay? which is the A7, the first, the seventh, the third, and then that flat fifth tone up in the treble side. Going over to that D7 for the comp. Super cool. And then we walk up into that last fourth phrase, which is really, really slick. It's almost a whole tone feel. And then we conclude with that uh, minor seven in bar eight, and then going to that G7 sharp five, which pulls us back to the top again, because that first section of the tune basically repeats. So after we have this, it circles back around for basically the same thing, like a repetition of that first part. And then the same phrases, B flat major seven, E flat major seven, and then that A alter dominant, D seven, and then we land. And now, technically the second part starts on measure 17. So then we have the pickups. And now when the melody goes, bah, 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 da, 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 we're gonna paint that with some really cool diminished chord substitutions for an alter dominant chord as well as some quartal harmony. That's Q-U-A-R-T-A-L. Quartal meaning non-tertiary, non-designed in thirds. So that's really slick, real Herbie Hancock, real modern jazz. So basically, starting on that second part in measure 17, we do the pickups. And then for that A note, we're painting that with essentially an F-sharp diminished which is a great common tone substitution for D7 flat nine or altered dominant chord, okay? So we're gonna go really slick and then and over that B flat melody note, we're gonna paint that with a basically a G minor 11. You could also consider it a suspended voicing. What a great chord there. I just love that stuff. So we paint a diminished chord substitution and a uh, minor 11th chord, which is a chord built on fourths over the beginning of that second part to really come in swinging as a jazz guitar player.
that's that feeling, really slick, okay? Then moving on to measure 22, we're climbing even higher up the melody, right there, and we're gonna jump up to that C note, and then we're gonna go back in the call and response. Doing that really cool 2-5 motion in between the melody phrases. Right, and then in measure 23, when we have that walk down, we're gonna do a, a nice pedal tone of the F note, kind of an octave riff, sort of um, Tal Farlow, sort of Gus Montgomery feel. Right there in between. So when we climb up that bit of melody in measure 21, and then into that new phrase, and then we're of course back to our B flat major seven, and back to the, the phrase in between with the E flat major seven in measure 24. And now how we tag this whole song when we come into the landing, we're going back to some diminished chords for those really slick substitutions for the altered dominant. So starting in measure 25, we're gonna paint that melody with diminished chords. And then it lands on that D note in measure 28, we're gonna paint that with essentially a rootless G minor nine. So G minor nine with B flat in the bass. Very nice chord, very nice chord. And then do our classic call and response. Okay, so going from measure 25, very cool painting of that descending phrase because basically in measure 25 with those pickups, those chromatic pickups, it leads us up to that E flat note. Perfect to paint that with diminished descending. And as of those of you folks who know the ins and outs of diminished chords know that every three frets a diminished chord repeats. I know it's black magic basically, but so those not only common tone substitutions of each other, but are essentially the same diminished chord because the diminished chord has four roots. So this is basically F sharp diminished, C diminished, E flat diminished, and A diminished all in the same chord. I know, we'll tell you why when you're older. So, right, really cool. And then we come out of that phrase by walking back up and that lands us on that really cool G minor nine with B flat in the bass, call and response. And then for our ending, we're gonna go to this really nice C minor chord, get some tonality here because we've been floating around in jazz land for so long. And then back to a diminished chord substitution. And then on that last diminished chord, what's labeled that tricky looking D7 flat nine sharp five, all it is is we're taking that F sharp diminished and pushing the pinky up one fret to get that melody note and on a nice G minor, okay? So this is a great jazz tune, and then click in the comments down below, go to jamalong.org, and make sure you pick up the notation for this. Like I said, we've got tablature, standard notation, and all the chord graphs, so you can't go wrong, as well as me playing it with a tempo adjuster so you can pitch it slow or fast in any tempo you need to learn this piece. So get on this, and uh, then, of course, go to our Facebook page and share it on Playing Music Together so we can see how you rock out. Happy jamming.